throughout Jude's epistle, he is warning. He's warning against those that are hypocrites and wolves in sheep's clothing, clouds without water. And he is warning those that have uh, stood for what's right to continue to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But while he, when he gets to the conclusion of this epistle, he, he goes from talking about those that are not right with God and those that are harming the church to turn in his attention to those that make up the church. Look with me in verse number 20. He says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and if some have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in the house of God. Now speak to our hearts and help us that have an ear and hear what the Spirit of God saith to the church. And help us, Lord to apply it to our lives that we might walk forth from this place truly having compassion on some and making a difference. Have your will and way now. Use this unworthy vessel. And Father, we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to these verses and see what Jude is saying. Jude is saying that as Christians... We need to be exercising. Look what he said in verse number 20 again. But ye, beloved, save people, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Can I say it is not God's responsibility to build your faith. God gave us all a measure of faith, but then it is up to us to exercise that faith. Uh, we exercise that faith... Uh, First of all, by being in the Scriptures. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. But then we have to practice the Scriptures. Uh, just like when uh, uh, you work out with weights, and if you look at me, you can tell that I don't. But if you did, uh, uh, in order to build muscles, you have to strain them and stretch them uh, and really tear them. Uh, uh, let them rest for a period and then do it over again. Uh, and over again, and each time you tear them, they get a little stronger, a little bigger, a little more powerful. Our faith has to do the same thing. Just reading the Bible and believing that God's able is one thing, but then you have to practice it in your life. When storm clouds come, when problems come, when issues come, you just have to exercise that faith and believe in God and continue to walk in faith and live by faith and therefore you'll build up your faith. Uh, the Christian life is a life of exercising. Can I say it's also a life of entreating? Look what it said in verse 20. But ye, be beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Can I say entreating means to really get a hold of the horns of the altar and talk to God. It's one thing to say, you're now I lay me down to sleep prayers. It's one thing to pray a prayer of vain repetitions where you say the same words over and over and over and over and over, but you don't mean it in your heart. Right. It's a different thing to pray in the Holy Ghost. Right. To where you get along with God and you begin to pray and the Holy Ghost takes over uh, and He intercedes what's in your heart to God. Uh, can I say, my dear friends, that kind of prayer is a prayer that uh, consists of several things. First of all, I found the best way to pray in the Holy Ghost is to pray the Word of God. When you start reminding God what God said, the Holy Ghost shows up. Hmm? Can I say, that kind of prayer is unselfish prayer. It's not a prayer about asking for things that we need. It's about praying for things that this world needs, and that's more of God and less of us. Uh, and it's also about praying that God will get glory in all that He does. Uh, 
We as Christians are to be exercising, we're to be entreating, we're also to be engaging. Look what it said in verse number 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. That word keep means to remain or to abide, uh, to be engaged in something. We are to keep ourselves in the love of God. Yeah. Can I help you with something? This world is nasty. Yeah. This world is wicked. Sure. This world is broken. This world has problems. And if all you dwell on is the world, you're going to be a mess. We as Christians have been given an out. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. And we can focus on things this world doesn't even know about, and we can truly uh, abide and walk and keep ourselves in the love of God. Uh, when you realize how much God loves you, and all that is available to you because of God's love, uh, why would you want to dwell anywhere but there? If you can rest your mind in the love of God, you can overcome most of the things that are thrown at you. Uh, can I say, not only are we to be engaging and entreating and exercising, but we're also to be eyeing something. He says in verse 21, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Can I say, wherever you focus, that's going to be where you end up. If your focus is on earthly things, you're going to end up living and abiding and dwelling and seeking after earthly things. But if you keep your eye on the true prize, the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and His coming, my dear friends, you'll live far above the rudiments of this world. Yes, We're to keep our eye on the Lord. We're to seek Him first. Notice a Christian is also to be expressive. Look at verse 22. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Unfortunately, our independent Baptist movement, starting in about the 70s and then taking really hold in the 80s, we became isolationists. And we became uh, supremacist, where we thought we were better than everybody and that we were to be isolated from everything, and we couldn't enjoy or be a part of anything in the world, and we really were to just bury our heads in the sand when it came to things of the world. We're to be big, ugly ostriches is really what they were teaching us. Well, what that did is that caused us to lose our children and lose two generations. The Bible says that we're to have compassion making a difference right we're to express the things that God has expressed to us right. to those who need it yeah. hmm? Amen. we my dear friends are not to be isolationists how can we win the world if we never go into the world Amen. and we certainly aren't supremist no. we're not worth the powder to take the blow away right. mm, I told brother Phil and back in Sunday school it's only one bad choice, and we're not over there and him preaching to us. We do not live above sin, my dear friends. Uh, and you can legislate righteousness all you want to, but until uh, uh, it's born in somebody's heart, uh, it'll never impact them. Hmm? We ought to serve God because we love Him, not because we're afraid of the preacher or whoever's uh, uh, lording over us if we don't. Hmm? Can I say, Jesus didn't lord over people. He just loved people. God help us to be like Jesus. Amen. And then we find that these scriptures teach that we're to be an example. Look what it says in verse 23. And of others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Can I say, there are some people you can love to Jesus... And there are some people you have to absolutely put the fear of God in. Mm. Uh, but the example we're to be is we're to hate the garments spotted by the flesh. Paul said in Romans chapter number 7, Who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, O wretched man that I am, 
Can I say, if we're left to our own conceits, uh, and if we follow the flesh, the flesh will always lead you away from God. Uh, and we're to hate where this flesh will take us. And we should hate the garments spotted by the flesh. And can I say, it is teaching us also where to hate sin, yes, sir. but love sinners. I hate what sin does to people and what it does to families and what it does to society. I hate that. But I don't hate people. Uh, why? Because God loves everybody. And so should we. Well, I was uh, doing some studying. I was down in South Carolina and reading the Word of God and got to thinking and uh, something about being alone and being quiet with God and doing some thinking about God. God will speak to you and give you some thoughts and and uh, the time missing that, the boys got down there, the, the whole uh, uh, breakfast area there and where Brother Greg had to stay, and it was just covered with notes, you know, everywhere. And they come in and messed it all up, started bringing food in and all that. I'm like, this is my study area. But anyway, I had all these notes sprung all over everywhere, but this was one thought I could not get away from. I've tried all week to get away from this thought, but I can't get away from it. And this is what I want to preach. I want to look again. At verse number 22, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Most time after service, I'll save this, but I want to preach on it today. I want to preach on be a blessing. Yeah. How many times have you heard me say at the end of service, now go out there, we're going to be facing folks that need some help. Yeah. Just be good to people. How many times have you heard me say that? Well, I want to preach on be a blessing. We just need to be a blessing. And some have compassion making a difference. Uh, can I say, if we'll do that, we'll be truly the epitome of a Bible Christian. If we'll just be a blessing to folks. And I got to thinking about being a blessing, and I had no idea what my wife was going to say in her testimony. She had no idea what I was going to preach on. Uh, 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 but can I say, whenever you mention being a blessing, the first thing people want to think about is giving people money. Can I say there's nothing wrong with helping people and giving people money, but uh, can I say a lot of times that's an excuse. Uh, we in America think if we throw enough money at it, the problem will go away. Mm? Sometimes throwing money at it is a way for you thinking, well, I've done all I can do. A lot of times people don't want your money. Mm, they just want you to be concerned about them. So being a blessing, preacher, why? Uh, why can I be a blessing? Why should I be a blessing? Why? What's so important about being a blessing? Can I say, first of all, you need to be a blessing for the burdens that you'll lift. Amen. You don't have to go very far to find folks that's under a load and got burdens. Can I say, in the world we live in, people are weighted down with financial burdens. They are. There are people weighted down with physical burdens. There are people weighted down with emotional burdens. Boy, we live in a day and age where there's been so much attack on people and people have faced so much that emotionally they're frail. Hmm? Yeah, sure. By the way, that does not make them weak. Right. That just means they need somebody to be a blessing. Hmm? There are folks that have social burdens. There are some people that just have, have a problem being in a society or in, in a place with people. They, they just have social burdens. They're they just not comfortable around people. Well, you ought to be where I'm at and look at people. You wouldn't be very comfortable either, huh? Mm -hmm. People can be ugly. People can be mean and nasty. Mm -hmm. If you uh, uh, don't go along with the flow, sometimes the flow will run over you. Mm -hmm. There are people that have spiritual burdens. A lot of them don't even know it. They just know their life isn't going in the direction that they're pleased with, and they don't understand why. They don't understand the reason being is they're an enmity with God, and God loves them, and God wants them to understand the fullness of what life really is, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, uh, and they have spiritual burdens, and they just need somebody to be a blessing. Amen. By being a blessing, you can help lift somebody's burden. Can I say there's nothing greater than helping somebody? Hmm? Where would we be had Jesus not come to help us? Every burden you face, he come to lift your burden. Hmm? Just be a blessing. Why? Because of the burdens you'll lift. 
sometimes I've I found, Brother Brian, uh, people have told me that I'm a great counselor. I, I have no idea what all that means. But I found the best counseling I've ever done is just sit and listen to people. I am telling them a lot of times, I, I have no magic wand to help you with your problems. But just by listening to people, you help lift their burden. Just be a blessing. Sometimes people just want somebody to listen. Sometimes just being able to get it off their chest helps lift their burden. You can be a blessing to somebody today. Amen. Might be a coworker, might be a neighbor, might be a friend, might be a family member, might be somebody in this church. You could be a blessing to somebody if you choose to. Just like in verse number 20, building up yourself, you have to take the responsibility to be a blessing. Hmm? Can I say this? Why do I have to be a blessing, preacher? For the bruises you'll help to heal. Hmm. I'd like to think that we do live in a bubble and nobody ever gets hurt. But even Disney can't write that movie. Hmm? You know, we like to hear songs that whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, tell that to somebody when they feel like they're getting killed. Hmm? Huh? Oh, God will take your trial and make it a blessing. Well, tell somebody that when they're in the middle of their trial. Yeah, amen. By being a blessing, you'll help to heal some bruises. And I say some are bruised by brokenness. I was talking to somebody just for service. Until you have experienced it, you have no idea what it is. Right. And it amazes me, those that haven't went through it are the quick, quickest to offer up their opinion yep. and the quickest to judge the person going through it. Yes, sure. hey, man. Hmm? You ought to never judge anybody until you've walked a mile in their shoes. Can I say there are folks who have suffered brokenness. Brokenness of spirit. Brokenness in their homes. Brokenness by losing their jobs. Brokenness uh, 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 by just uh, uh, having an emotional breakdown. And if you've never had one, you ought to thank God for it because there are folks that do not uh, bounce back very quickly from it. But by being a blessing... You can help heal those bruises. Some people just need somebody to care, have compassion, make a difference. Because when you've been broken and shattered, you think everybody wants to shatter you. And so if somebody comes by with nothing to gain from it, not to take advantage of somebody, but just to be a blessing, it helps heal that bruise. Not only the bruise of brokenness, there's the bruise of bitterness. Some folks have been broken and they've gotten through it, but they become bitter because somebody didn't come to be a blessing sooner. Hmm? Listen, as God's people... We are required to esteem others better than ourselves. But can I say, life gets in the way a lot of times of us esteeming somebody better than ourselves. Sometimes we get so busy, we don't take time to be a blessing. It's not because uh, 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 we're mean-spirited or wicked or anything else. We just get so caught up in our own lives... We don't take time to be a blessing and help somebody else in their life. Amen. And when somebody's sitting there looking for somebody to come by to be an encouragement and nobody comes, they can get bitter. Hmm? Yes, There's a lot of people out of church today because church people never showed they cared. You can help heal the bruise of bitterness. Uh, one way is a good way is to tell them, I'm sorry I wasn't here sooner. There are a lot of folks dealing with bitterness. Because I'm going to be honest with you, life's not fair. Amen. Can I say, a lot of times the devil gets credit for it. But a lot of times it's not the devil being picking on you. 
It's just the course of life running its course because sin caused everything to get out of sorts. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? Well, the foundation has been destroyed by sin. So what are we going to do? We need to be a blessing. And God might use you to heal somebody's bruises. Bruises of brokenness, bruises of bitterness. But can I say this? Um, some people are bruised by blemishes. Some people are bruised by mistakes and failures and faults in their life. Is there anybody in here that's never had a blemish? Hmm? Yeah, we've all had failures. We've all made mistakes. We've all sinned against God. Hmm? I'd like to say being saved 45 years will cause you not to have any more of those problems, but that's not true. You know what? I just turned 56 and I still get pimples. Isn't that something? I thought you got rid of them when you was a teenager. Huh? But you still get blemishes. Well, spiritually, you'll still get blemishes. I'd like to tell you, get to the point where you walk on water, but that's not the case. And the only reason Peter did is he was walking with the Lord. Are you listening? And he still sank. You're going to stub your toe every now and then. You're going to step in a mud puddle every now and then. You're going to mess up. If you stay around the Bible and you stay around the house of God, you realize the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. Huh? If we'll confess our sin, He's faithful and just, forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and you can stay around the Bible and around the uh, house of God uh, and you, you get things made right and you can go on with your life. But there are some people, they're bruised by mistakes and failures. And the biggest mistake and failure they, they are bruised by is the one that they can't forgive themselves. And they just need somebody to come by and be a blessing. Hmm? Because you know how it is. When you got a pimple, you think the whole world sees it. Hmm? And when you've made a mistake, every time you even come to the house of God, you think everybody's looking at you and your mistake. And somebody just needs to be a blessing. I had a preacher friend one time. He blew it. Blew it big time cost him his family, cost him his ministry, cost him everything. I just try to be a blessing to him. Brother Phil, I've got a rule in my life. If you're my friend, you're always my friend. Amen. Don't matter what you do, you're my friend. Amen. Don't matter what I do, you're my friend. Yeah, amen. Just the way it is. I've tried to live by that. Yeah. Now, that sounds like a good rule to live by, but you wouldn't believe how I've been talked about a dog because of that yeah. by Baptist preachers. Because I have the audacity to be a friend to somebody who's blown it. Hmm? Well, Peter blew it. Jesus still loved him. Hmm? Just try to be a friend. Well, I tried to be a friend to this preacher. Spent time with him. Tried to encourage him. Tried to be a blessing to him. You know what he told me? He said, Preacher, everything you're telling me is right. He said, But I can't go to church. Because my greatest fear is, is I'll walk in and I'll see somebody that I preach to. I was trying to be a blessing, but he couldn't forgive himself. Hmm? Tried to tell him, well, people would be encouraged to see you. Hmm? I'm just trying to help you this morning to realize being a blessing, just because you don't feel that way, doesn't mean somebody else doesn't feel that way. There are people that might just need somebody to be a blessing to them because of their blemishes. Hmm? And we're all good candidates there because we've all blown it. Hmm? It ought to just be a blessing. Why, preacher? Because of the beacon you'll become. Nobody cares to hang out with, you know, Doggy Downer, Mr. Gloom and Doom. Mr. You're no good. Nobody wants to hang out with that person. But if you start being a blessing to people, God's light will, in, will shine on you. You'll be a beacon to somebody else. You'll help light the path of where God wants them by just being a blessing. Hmm? 
just shedding some light on some things. Shouldn't Christians be a blessing? Well, how come so few are? Hmm? Thought about this, by being a blessing, you don't know the bonds that will be made. When you're a blessing to somebody, you never know, that might be an eternal friendship that becomes as close as Jonathan and David. Can I say? You never have enough friends. You know what a real friend is? Somebody that knows all your good traits, somebody that knows all your bad traits, and they still choose to be your friend. That's a friend. Abraham Lincoln said if a man lives his whole lifetime and the end of his life has got five friends, he's a wealthy man. Yeah. Hmm? So how many friends you got? How many true friends? Hmm? You could always use another one. By being a blessing, you never know the friendship that might come from that. Hmm? Just being a blessing. Just encouraging somebody. Having compassion on somebody. Well, I thought about this. Preacher, why should I be a blessing? Because of the benefits that will result. Hmm? When you're a blessing, lives will be impacted. Is that not what Jesus left us here to do? Did he not tell us to be a city set on a hill, light? Did he not tell us to be salt of the earth, salt? We're to be light and salt. We're to impact other people's lives. You do that by being a blessing. Sometimes you're blessing by praying for them. Sometimes you're blessing by uh, uh, just spending time with them. Sometimes you're blessing by uh, uh, offering them something. Let's be a blessing. You'll never know the benefits of that, the lives that will be impacted. You may help somebody, and then they may help ten people. Hmm? You never know the lives that will be impacted. There's benefits that result in being a blessing. Can I say this? Your life will be bettered. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. When you are a blessing, your life becomes better. Hmm? Amen. I don't know how many times I've, I've been over to the nursing home to go maybe have a service and preach, and, and, and you want to go to be a blessing, and you end up coming home, you know, receiving the blessing. It's a bigger blessing going and just seeing them folks than you could have ever been to them. Hmm? Yes, that's true. Just one of those things. Now, where's the Ellis kids? I get to go tomorrow to their school and do a devotion. And so I've been thinking of ways I can embarrass them. I might wear that sport coat Christian's wearing. That might be a real good, good thing right there, huh? I offered to wear his Teletubby costume. I'm telling you, Christian, he had too many concussions playing football. That's his excuse. Uh, he's got Teletubby costumes and... And you know, and penguin costumes, and you you need a costume. He's got it, I promise you. Uh, but uh, I've been thinking about you know going over there and embarrass him. No, you you're going over there to speak to children. You want to be a blessing. But I know what's going to happen. I'm going to come away with such a bigger blessing. Just seeing all those kids, you know, excited about hearing something about Jesus while they're at school. What a blessing. Your life will be bettered when you're a blessing. Can I say this? Not only will lives be impacted and your life be better, but the Lord will be pleased when you're a blessing. Amen. Who wouldn't want the Lord to be pleased with your life? Well, here's the way. Be a blessing to somebody. Hmm? You don't have to labor and, 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 and you know, do all kinds of things to bring shame on yourself for God to be pleased with you. I think God's not pleased with that. Around Easter, every year over in the Philippines, there are guys that will nail themselves to crosses thinking they're pleasing God. That doesn't please God. And God despised the shame of the cross. Hmm? You know what pleases God? When we take the things of God and go help somebody else. That pleases God. Huh? Well, I've said all that. I'm about done. How can you be a blessing? How can you be a blessing? Well, first of all, you can be a blessing by being positive. There's so much negative things in this world, and so many people have a negative viewpoint on something. You'll be a blessing just being positive. No matter what they're going through and how terrible of a storm or situation there is, if you can go and be positive by not adding to their troubles, you will be a blessing. Hmm? Thought about this by being proactive. 
You can't be a blessing never doing anything for God. It's kind of like singing that song, Standing on the Promises. How can we sing that song, Sitting on the Premises? It just don't work. Hmm? Well, you can talk about being a blessing all you want to, but you've got to go out and be a blessing. You've got to seek somebody out. Somebody that is hurting is not going to come to you and say, Hey, will you be a blessing to me? Hmm? When you're hurting, do you go to somebody and say, Hey, I could really use you to be a blessing? No. But you sure do appreciate when somebody comes to you and says, I've had you on my heart. I want to be a blessing to you. Hmm? Be proactive. Brother Frank Stenson's name's back there on that banner. One of the trophies of grace that's come through this church. You know what Brother Frank used to do all week long? He would pray all week long. God, show me somebody that's in need, somebody that's hurting, somebody that's down. And when he'd come to church, if God pointed somebody out to him, he'd take them out to lunch, he'd be kind to them, he'd find out what's going on in their life. He just befriended them. He was a true Barnabas. You want to be a blessing, be proactive. Lord, show me somebody I can be a blessing to. You know somebody's hurt, just go to them. Don't wait, just go to them. Be proactive, you can be a blessing. Be proactive, be, be positive. Don't, don't show up on somebody and say, well, I hear you got it really rough. Well, you deserve it. Now, that's a blessing. Huh? No, I'm talking about being a blessing. Be positive. Be proactive. And then be a pillar. You ever, ever heard that message? Get that message. It's Aunt Lynn's favorite message I've ever preached on being a pillar in the church. Hmm? A pillar is one that somebody else can look to and count on. Somebody that can withstand the pressure. Just be a pillar for somebody. Just be there for them. Just be there if nothing else and hold their hands up. Just be there and encourage them. Just be there for them. Sure. Be a pillar in their life. Somebody that once they get through whatever they're going through, they'll look back and say, boy, I'm glad that person right there didn't collapse, but stayed with me until I got through this. Just be somebody somebody can count on. Somebody can look to. Somebody can say, wow, they truly were a blessing in my life. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you was a blessing to somebody? Hmm? You don't have to go very far to find somebody that needs somebody to be a blessing to them. Amen. Maybe somebody here today, really low, needs somebody to be a blessing to them. Don't have to go too far out the driveway and you'll find somebody that needs somebody to be a blessing. When's the last time you was a blessing to somebody? Hmm? You say, preacher, I'm really hurting. I... I need somebody to be a blessing to me. You want a blessing? Be a blessing. Amen. Be a blessing to somebody else and you'll find out. God will send somebody to be a blessing to you or he'll just make a blessing just for you. We just need to be a blessing. I'm convinced, Brother Mike, that if we would just take all the goodness we sang, God's been good, take all the things God's been to us and share it with somebody else. We could impact somebody's life. The greatest thing when you get to heaven is not going to be streets of gold, not going to be walls of jasper, gates of pearl. Greatest thing is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after that, look around and see people that you impacted their life. And it starts with being a blessing. Why don't you make up your mind? You're going to be a blessing. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, show me somebody I can be a blessing to. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord for the blessings He's been to you. Amen. Maybe He spoke to you about something else. You need to come do business with God. I know one thing. This world doesn't have enough folks being blessings. Maybe, just maybe. We can impact somebody else's life before Jesus comes. Folks are coming. They're praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for all the folks that have been blessings in my life. It helps shape and mold us to what we are. God, I pray for some that may be here today that's facing some brokenness or some bitterness or some blemishes I pray Lord the sweet Holy Ghost would just help them and then God I pray you'd send somebody to be a blessing somebody be a positive influence and a pillar in their life Lord I pray for those that are struggling 
whether financial or physical or emotional or some other burden, I pray for them. God, you'd help them. I pray for this dear brother's wife, Miss Cindy. You'd touch her and help her. I pray for Miss Janet. You'd help her. I pray for Miss Edwina and Amos. You'd help them. Then, God, I pray for the greatest need of all. There's somebody here today unsaved. What a blessing that would be in their life if they just trust Christ. Lord, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would have compassion and go to them draw them, help them realize they need to be saved, that you came and bled and died to save them. Lord, they can be saved today. God, I pray, pray your people get a greater burden for sinners who are dying and going to hell. God, I pray your people get a burden to be a blessing. Have your way now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.